Hi guys, it's Andre from Conveyor of Randomness here and today I'll be showing you how to connect an older DSLR camera to a computer and use it for live streaming. If you're like me and find yourself with more time on your hands because you may be at home more often and enjoy playing video games, why not throw yourself into something more daring and start streaming yourself? playing those video games you enjoy on something like the increasingly popular Twitch and YouTube. It seems across the board on those streaming platforms that viewers tend to be more able to connect with you if you have a camera showing yourself. This is the first part in a new series of me making a streaming setup on a budget and with equipment I already have. In today's video I'll be showing you how I would connect my Sony A5000 camera to my computer and use it as a streaming camera. In this video I'll only be looking at the equipment needed between the camera and the computer. Some people may choose to use a webcam or their mobile phone for this part, but as I've got this A5000 just sitting around, I may as well use it in this permanent setup. There are a couple of extra things that I'll need to complete this setup. Firstly, a dummy battery adapter that will allow me to prolong my shooting time instead of having to use multiple batteries that all have to be interchanged after each one dies, which potentially is going to be disrupting to your streaming flow. This dummy battery allows me to have one battery connected to a permanent power source that will stay on for the duration of the stream. Now there's nothing wrong with just using normal camera batteries but you'll need to have at least one spare battery. The second thing I'll need is a micro HDMI to full HDMI adapter. The A5000 only has a micro HDMI slot so I'll need the adapter to allow me to connect a full size HDMI cable to. The third thing is the HDMI cable itself and the final piece of equipment is the HDMI capture card. I got this one, the cheapest capture card that you can get on Amazon, which I reviewed previously and I will link to that video up there. This will essentially bring in the signal from the camera and convert it to a video format that the computer can interpret. You will find that this method may work for a wide range of cameras as the only difference here is the type of HDMI connection that the A5000 has. Some cameras are able to connect to your computer wirelessly through built-in software, but I prefer wired connections as there tends to be less lag, less delay and a more reliable connection when compared to a wireless solution. Once it's all connected, you're ready to get onto the computer. I'm using a Mac Mini and the program is the popular free-to-use broadcast streaming software, OBS. On OBS, you'll need to create the camera as a source. Press Add on the Sources box. Select video capture device. And where it says create new, just rename the device, Sony A5000 camera. And press OK. On the properties box, select the device drop down box and select USB camera. The picture from the camera should now show up. So once it's shown up, just press OK. And you'll notice on the screen, you'll see the on-screen display from the camera, but we'll sort that out later. So now time to move on to the settings on the camera. If you want the sharpest image with blurred out background, select aperture priority in the shoot video mode. There you go. In the camera settings, change the focus to manual focus. So if it's on anything else, just change it to manual focus and then refocus the camera just to make sure that the subject, i.e. you, is in focus. And there we go. So in the camera settings, you want to change your white balance. Sometimes it might be set to auto, auto white balance, but I change it to C temp filter and this allows me to change the, the temperature depending on my environment and for me I keep it on 4400k. And finally you'll want to get rid of this box that's around my face. I'll show you how to do that. Back into the settings. So in the camera settings you go to smile face detection which is currently set to on. And we just turn that off and as you can see that box has now gone. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see the on-screen camera display information. On the back of the camera, on the display button, if you press that, you need to select the one with the least amount of information on it, which it's that one. 
Unfortunately, we can't remove this information from the camera, but if we go back into OBS, I'll show you the perfect way to hide it from your stream. Let me right click on the picture. We select transform and edit transform. Just move this over to the side. And then down here, you've got your crop options. So now we want to crop from the bottom of the picture. So if we just start increasing that, you can actually see where the green line down here is starting to crop into the picture just to get rid of that, those lines at the bottom. And if we do it enough, then we've completely got rid of it. And obviously you can make any other adjustments that you want. So if I want to crop in from the left, I can do so. It's particularly useful if, you, if you've got a frame that you want to use when you're streaming to on your layout. As you can see, I might just type a number in. So I might increase that a little bit more. 170, let's go a little bit more. I think that should be okay. And once we've done that, we can press close. So that's a much lot, a lot better now that is. And finally, you can resize and move the image to exactly where you want to. So obviously this is a little bit too big for the stream. So I'm going to reduce it that much. And then I can sort of move it around, put it either side anywhere I want to. Maybe if I want to keep it on that side, I want to be appearing as I'm facing the gameplay. I'll click, right click on the picture, transform, flip horizontal. And there you go. I'm looking on the other side. There may be other settings that you may feel are beneficial to your environment. These are the ones that are really good for mine initially, but I will have a play about with different settings as I go along. And just to show you a finished one, I've got this one. So I've got a nice, nice frame around it. So if I go into my gameplay, then I've got a nice frame around my picture there. So that's the camera part in setting up my streaming equipment. Hopefully this video has been useful to you, whether this is your first or last step in building your own streaming setup. There are gonna be hundreds of different ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it with the equipment I've got and the extra things that I've brought in at the budget I have. Let me know in the comments below if this is similar or completely different to the camera setup that you have. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye and happy streaming. Why don't you watch one of the videos below or both if you want before the time runs out. Three, two, one.